Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Yan Yu, founder of the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease. For those new to these videos, welcome to the Calgary Guide video series. For those returning viewers, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes. Before we begin, just a note that you can help support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. So let's get started. Type 1 diabetes starts with a combination of genetic susceptibility and environmental triggers. That's as much as we know at this point, and science is still evolving. In terms of genetic susceptibility, there are at least two groups of mutations. The first group is the IDDM1 HLA mutations, and the second group is the IDDM2 insulin gene mutations. I'm guessing that IDDM1 and IDDM2 all stand for insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus type 1 and insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus type 2. This genetic susceptibility results in a failure of maturing T cells in the thymus to develop recognition of the insulin gene, which results in an abnormal attack of insulin-producing beta cells by the body's own immune system. You also have mutations in the HLA MHC genes, which can either facilitate or prevent T cell receptor binding to the beta cells. Now, in terms of environmental triggers, we have the diet, which might contain cow's milk and nitrosamines, viruses, including rubella, coxsackie, and mumps, drugs and toxins, including vacor, aloxa, streptozocin, and pentamidine, stresses, including repeated sicknesses, surgery, and puberty. Now, it turns out that in the diet and in some viruses, there can be foreign antigens that structurally mimic beta cell antigens, which is an example of the concept of molecular mimicry, which results in the immune system attacking both of these foreign and self antigens, so that when the body's immune system attacks the viruses, for example, they also attack the beta cells of the pancreas. In addition, viruses, drugs, and stress, specific types of stress, can directly destroy or damage beta cells enough to expose these antigens to the body's immune system. All of these mechanisms, which basically all involve the body's immune system attacking the beta cells of the pancreas, contributes to the breakdown of the immune system's self-tolerance of the pancreatic beta cells, which results in an autoimmune attack on the beta cells of the pancreas. The body's own immune system will break down pancreatic cells, which is most unfortunate. This autoimmune attack involves both the innate and acquired immune systems, involving monocytic pancreatic islet infiltration and direct T-cell attack of beta cells, known as insulitis. A component of this autoimmune attack involves autoantibodies generated against beta cells, and that's why sometimes with type 1 diabetic patients, you can detect anti-insulin and anti-GAD65 antibodies in their serum. Note that the number of autoantibodies detected predicts the likelihood of developing type 1 diabetes. Going back to the autoimmune attack on beta cells, the attack results in the loss of beta cell mass to less than half the original mass. Now when this happens, that leads to a state known as prediabetes, which the patient is still asymptomatic, but postprandially, or after meals, their blood glucose concentration becomes higher than normal, and their insulin response to IV glucose becomes blunted. They produce less insulin than they need to. And finally, Going back to the main mechanism prong, over time, only less than 10% of the original beta cells are still functional. And that's what leads to type 1 diabetes mellitus, which is a primary absolute insulin deficit. Absolute meaning that the body basically doesn't have enough insulin it needs to function. Unlike a relative insulin deficit in type 2 diabetes, which means that the body still has some insulin, but just is not responding to it. So that's all for today, everybody. Thank you for your attention. If any thoughts about the order in which I should present these slides or what topic to present next, let me know. And if you have any comments about the scientific and medical information presented, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave a comment down below. Once again, please support us in our work by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks everybody. See you in the next video.